Hello and welcome to the Solar Show. Today we are going to be talking about a key trend in solar which is Solar's customer service challenge. This is also the cover story that we have featured in the magazine this month and talking about it with me is Manish Kumar, Deputy Editor at Saur Energy. Welcome Manish. Thank, so thank Manish, you, uh, as the person who does a lot of the work on our stories, tell us about the background to this particular story. So after the launch of PM Sorighar last year, we have seen that suddenly the connections of uh, residential rooftop sector is going quite up. Uh, we can see a lot of traction of, from the consumer side. So I, we thought that uh, while a lot of solar companies are investing more on media outreach, like reaching out to consumers, like uh, roping, con like roping in celebrities, uh, doing a lot of social media works, so now we think the consumer centric things are also to be done very, very profusely so that uh, because solar project life is already for 25 years. So now I think it is very significant, very prominent that these solar companies focus more on their customer service. So through this story, we try to understand how different companies are reaching out to their consumers uh, in terms of their customer service, how much they're investing on that and a lot of other things that um, we try to focus on this story. But just for viewers, I want to put this a little in perspective. Uh, two years back, India had about two and a half lakh people with rooftop solars on their residence or even for companies. Today, that number has climbed to 8.5 lakhs. That massive jump is primarily a result of the PM Suryaghar scheme. And you must keep in mind that the scheme has a target of one crore households. So that's Quite what that best. means is we're not even at 10% of its targets. And that means it's going to be pushing more and more people towards adapting solar and that itself will create its own challenges. So Manish, you've been a lot on field trips, you met a lot of people, especially on the rooftop side. I believe you have a rooftop solar at your own yes, place also. Just installed this. So year. what, what in your view is the most common customer service issue you've seen so far? So if we specifically talk about uh, residential rooftop sector, I have also, I think six and seven months back, I installed my system. We also talked to a lot of consumers. So I think the main issue, the most more prominent issue is the cleaning part. Like a lot of consumers complained that uh, the solar vendor they tried had talked to them, uh, assured something else, some more quantity of production, but they're getting the lesser amount of quantity what was expected from there. Maybe it was because of uh, less maintenance, less, uh, less uh, cleaning. So that is one issue is the lower generation. Second is uh, sometimes uh, other issue we have seen is the malfunctioning of the inverters. Maybe temporarily, maybe the in-grid uh, grid voltage is higher or sometimes some other things happen. So uh, inverter issues, generation issues, these are some of the common issues that we have encountered. So that's very interesting. So what you're saying is uh, right now, whenever they face a problem, who do they normally turn to? Is it the installer or is it the equipment manufacturers? Yes, because I think uh, what we call EPC or installer or vendor in the technical terms or main jargons. I think uh, because mainly these are the vendors who procure all the solar panels, uh, inverters and other materials, wire, DC cables, everything. So because they are the main contact point for the consumers, they, they often approach to them. And because these vendors have uh, in connection with the module makers or inverters makers, so then they also reach out to them. But according to my experience and experience of some other people, what we have seen that majority of them, the EPC players, vendors are also trained uh, a bit to handle a lot of things, inverter mal malfunctioning or other things. So they can handle what they say that whenever things go wrong, that uh, that is not, not their uh, jurisdiction, they don't understand these things. Then they approach to their uh, solar module makers or solar inverts that we have seen. So of course, along with the boom in solar, we've seen there's been an explosion in terms of installers also, right? The yes. National Rooftop Portal has thousands of them today listed. And even if you don't know somebody, you can still go there. So having known that, right? What would you tell a customer today? What are the things to look out for when he's picking a vendor? I think uh, there is a lot of malpractices, bad sales practices happening. I think a lot of things depend on the technology part. Like uh, any monoperc cell is like powered enough to produce four uh, units of electricity per day. Uh, and according to MNRI guideline, the solar vendor have to take care of the maintenance repair of the system for the initial five years after the installation. Right. But what we have sent during the sales part, a lot of sales representatives say that, okay, this is our USP that we are um, giving with such kind of panels that can produce four units of day, four units of electric solar power per day. And that is our USP. Second thing that okay, this is our USP that we are taking care of a plan for the initially five years. 
our USB and we are charging more for that. So there's some malpractices, bad selling happening. I think that is where awareness needs to be done uh, that uh, solar panel already have this capacity to produce average four units of uh, electricity per watt uh, per day. So you're saying that per kilowatt, so yeah, sure. So you're saying that fundamentally, the problem is that they're not being told about all the benefits properly. Yes. yes. And when there's a problem, they might struggle with it. Mm -hmm. And right now, I guess they only have the APC to look at because mm -hmm. that's the face of the whole system. Tell me, uh, we, I have seen this industry evolve and it's been from primarily being a B2B sector where you used to have utility, utility scale plants and C and I segment. Today, it's very B2C, right? Which is why we see all these brand ambassadors and everybody else trying to sell solar. Does that mean the companies at the manufacturing end whose products are being used in these plants and fundamentally from a customer perspective, there is the module, which is I think 50 to 60 percent of the cost. There is the inverter, hmm. which is the brains of the system. And of course, the structure. Do these companies also need to beef up their uh, servicing capabilities or are they? do you believe they are happier leaving it to the APC? I think the, how the system, what uh, the different stakeholders told me that when it comes to their warranty or servicing, like they already give some kind of uh, warranty right. for 10 years. So they give the warranty to the dealers and then dealer pass on the warranty to the EPC players. But many a times we have seen the actual the consumers who, on whose premises this system have been installed. They have not got the physical warranty card. Right. So at the, uh, maybe after five years, maybe your installer is not there in the market. So it is very difficult at that point of time to catch hold of your uh, solar module maker to claim warranty if there anything happens. So I think this is one of the lacuna that we have found during our story that um, a lot of people said that this is the lacuna that uh, a lot of solar consumers are not getting the warranty card. Uh, even in, in installer uh, inverters, they have not got uh, a lot of time their warranty card. So anything happens because the life is so large. 25 years, so anything happens after 10 years or 5 years, whenever there is a warranty period, then things will go wrong and the consumer will be at the wrong side and they will be not be able to claim the warranty. So that is the one of the shortcomings that we have. That's, that's interesting because, you know, I think we've mentioned this in the story also that in a market like the US, which was very high rooftop penetration, they conducted a survey after a few years, recent survey, and the key finding was that most customers, their biggest grouse was that my installer has disappeared or basically gone bankrupt and gone. And there's no reason to think that India is very different from that market eventually in the long term. And especially when you think that we have literally thousands and thousands of installers who are diving into this market to build on it. Good. So that's I think that's a point we've covered in the story also. Mm -hmm. From a resolution perspective, what do you think, do you believe companies are adapting fast enough in terms of investing in customer service? And uh, how do you see that play out? Yes, I think... Uh more, a number of companies are now investing more towards customer service, bringing new innovation things like uh, you can reach out to them through WhatsApp, you can reach out to them through their applications, you can reach out to the toll free numbers and other means they are available on 24 hours or that if they claim that within 24 hours we will solve your issues. So things are wrapping up and I think the customer, the solar companies are also charging more to the customers if they want to better offer better O&M services. Like we have seen some companies, I think there is Freer Energy, there is Solar Square, who give additional package of O&M at some additional cost, like beyond the MNRE guideline, cleaning part and other things they give as, as an add-on service. We have also mentioned about Urja Energy, Urja, who, what they do, they can, they also offer third party services that even if you have got your systems installed from some other company, right. they can take care of OM at an extra charge. Sure. So there is segregated, some companies are giving uh, these things are at an additional cost, definitely. Great. So, in fact, you, meant, you mentioned, I think, Urja, it should be Urjan, I guess. Urjan. Right? Urjan from the Mumbai based one, Mumbai. right? Urjan Clean Tech, yeah. So, in effect, what we are saying is OM is a key is a key factor. And companies are definitely investing in it in terms of post-purchase uh, servicing through extended warranties. What else do you think, what sort of a recourse would a customer have today if something was to go wrong and his initial installer is not there? Is there anything from the government right now or there's nothing? So only uh, we can see that there is only the operational guidelines of PM Surekar where the MNRE says that for the initial five years, the solar vendor had to take care of the all the maintenance like repair or anything goes wrong, it is underperforming or anything is not working. So the vendors have to take care. But after five years, what will happen that nobody knows. So at that point of time, there are very few players 
uh, there are very few um, uh, solar companies which offer dedicated O&M services. So either you pay extra and take care of your system for the next uh, after the uh, beyond the five years period, or you clean your uh, on yourself, or uh, you call other technician to take care of if any malfunctioning happens on the modules sure. or solar uh, solar inverters. So while we talk about the matter of payments, I must mention this that you know uh, Mani spoke about MNRE guidelines and. A recurring complaint we heard from people in the market was that the MNRE guideline of rupees 55,000 per kilowatt is too low. Their contention was that at this price, they really can't deliver the kind of quality and service that people expect for a product which is supposed to last for 25 years. So uh, frankly, I would urge consumers to or potential prospects to, to keep that in mind when they're evaluating potential companies to look at, you know, buying solar from because it is a long-term relationship and looking at just the initial price may be very short-term thinking. Uh, would you agree with that, Manish? Sure, sure. Yeah. So one final question. Do you think the market has gone far enough in terms of understanding that consumer needs are changing and companies are investing enough or do you feel that they would prefer a model where the EPC handles the consumer? You're talking about the manufacturers or yeah. the vendors? Yeah, the manufacturers their uh, expansion so i think yes uh, they are also trying uh, from there you know, if we talk about the con consumer outreach mm -hmm. so they have also a lot of module makers inverter makers are also using social media sites right. to use animation and other works to create awareness on uh, their own side we can see sonora solar which is using a mini truck to reach out to tire they said that they are one they want to go to tire one tire two and tire three cities so that people get to more know more about rooftop solar so a lot of solar model makers are also using that uh, uh, some tools to increase awareness, but they're mostly relying on the dealers and EPC players to make when it comes to their installation part and taking care of their consumers. They're only, I think they're confined to only their warranty part uh, to take care of the consumers. We've seen in India because of the way solar evolved, a lot of manufacturers also got into EPC. Hmm. Do you see that an, as an advantage for a consumer that you're buying, you're getting your whole plant from the company who, which, which has also actually made the modules? Is that an advantage or Yes, no? we have seen that a lot of module makers actually claim that they have their EPC part. But there is very little success we have seen. Although a lot of uh, solar module makers claim on their website that they offer EPC services. But okay. when we actually go to them, talk to them. So that is either very, very small part uh, they are doing or they are not doing at all. Okay. So just for the sake of name, a lot of people have mentioned that. So certainly but I don't not, see it's a major Certainly success. not the rooftop segment for retail. That's not an area of interest for them. Yes, yes. Great. I think I'll, I'll take a pause there. We've covered most of this in our cover story and you'll find a lot more facts and interesting information there if you check it out at sorenergy.com. The link is there in our uh, description for this video and I look forward to you on the next edition of The Solar Show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.